everybody experiences grief and loss differently. We process it differently. However, there are some tried and trues, you know, and sometimes though, what works for other, some doesn't work for others. And it depends on the loss as well. So when my dad died, I came back to the UK and I shut the curtains. I didn't want to talk to anybody except for my daughter. Like I didn't, I just wanted to shut out the world. everybody. Welcome back. I am your host, Stacey Yurig, and my guest once again is Lisa Haycock. Hi, Lisa. How are you? Hi. It's so good to be back. I'm so happy to have you here. And if people don't know, Lisa was a guest of mine in the past. The link to that particular episode is going to be in the show notes. And what we talked about was this really traumatic experience, if you will, that Lisa had over a close to a two-year period where she had 12 significant, profound losses in her life. She lost her son-in-law. She lost her mother. She lost her father. She lost her niece. And those were just some of the really impactful losses that she had. And in that episode, we talked about how grief shows up and what's happening inside the system when... We have triggers, if you will, that remind us of that loss. And it can be really debilitating. And what I love about Lisa is Lisa's taken her challenge and she's turned it into something beautiful. She is a life coach. She specializes in grief and she's known as a grief educator. And I don't really know what a grief educator is. So I wanted to have her come back on and really share with us how she helps people through that process. So welcome back. Thank you so much. It's good to be here. So good to have you. So Lisa, what is a grief educator? You know, it is really what it says on the tin, so to speak. So um, you, I think many ways we're grief illiterate. I think we're getting better, but I certified as a grief educator. And that is what we do is we educate about grief, about the multiple t- types of losses. Loss isn't just, and grief isn't just loss of a loved one through death. There are so many, anything that causes pain, that is loss, there's grief. So it could be divorce, parental alienation. It could be the loss of, you know, moving to a different country, the loss of a community, loss of religion, loss of your faith. It could be a loss of your health. I mean, you name it, pregnancy loss, anything that you lose in divorce. I think I said divorce is, is really grief. And so what I do is I educate those, whether they're corporate you know, the in the corporate world, organizations where we go, hey, listen, you have maternity leave. When someone comes back from maternity leave, how do you support them? Well, when someone dies, you have two days, five days, paid maybe, you know, and you know, your mom just died or someone you love just died. And if they're an in-law, you might not get any paid leave, but you just take it unpaid. And when you come back to work after a week, what do the managers, the HR managers, the employers, what, what do they have in place to support the bereaved person. Um, it, same for divorce and others. What what do they have? So we just try to educate individuals on loss and grief. Um, so I speak a lot about that, and I do in in the podcast as well. So really, grief educating is creating a safe space for people to ask questions. Like, what do I do? What do I say to the person who is suffering? What do I not say? You know, what do I do? What do I not do? What do I say? What do I not say? And it's about educating people to make them a little less grief illiterate. Well, let's, and I love that term, by the way, because it's so simple. Let's talk about that part of what do you say or not say? Because I can't count how many times I've had a close family member. I have a lot of in-laws. One time my my sister-in-law lost her dad. 
And it was a long, arduous passing, and it was really hard on the family, you know, her family, her siblings, and her mom. And, you know, during that time, she was really disappointed in how many people kind of couldn't support her in the way she felt she needed to be supported. And she did say to me at one time, I just don't think they know what to say. My friends don't know what to say because I'm not the same person. So they're just not saying anything. They're just, they just stopped showing up. And so now you have this secondary loss on top of the original loss so yes. can we talk about that and really like, do you have tips or tricks on w- what to say when somebody that you're close with is going through that so they don't have multiple losses compounding? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. And we, as we all know, everybody experiences grief and loss differently. We process it differently. However, there are some tried and trues, you know, and sometimes though, what works for other, some doesn't work for others. And it depends on the loss as well. So when my dad died, I came back to the UK and I shut the curtains. I didn't want to talk to anybody except for my daughter. Like I didn't, I just wanted to shut out the world. I was exhausted. When my mom died and Jack died, my son-in-law I opened the curtains I needed people I needed that support I needed my friends so it depends too and it's hard as the grieving person on what to how to express what you need so what I usually say for those who are supporting a loved one through grief is to simply just be present. You don't have to say a word to them. You just have to be present. Now, what does that look like? Maybe you live in a different state or a different country. As long as they know you're in the peripheral, right? As long as they know you're there, check in with them. You don't need to respond. I just wanted to let you know how much I love you and I'm thinking of you. And they may respond or they may not, but they just That message, that text, that WhatsApp message, that Facebook message is all they needed to know that they're not alone because nobody can go to that place that that person is. So your sister-in-law, nobody could go with her to that depth. It's a very lonely place. But people can be the gatekeeper. They can be the person on the outside. Just here, do you need to eat? Feed them you know, hydrate them, do their laundry, you know, the think of the practical, think of the things that you do every day, right? So every day you do the dishes or you need to clean your house or you need to go to the, you know, you need to go to the grocery store. You're at the grocery store and someone goes, hi, how are you doing? Having a great day. And you've just lost somebody. You're like, I'm not having a great day. It's shit. You know, but you can't say that to the poor cashier, right? So, I mean, you kind of could. You could, but you, the poor thing is just doing her you job. Know, you I know? do think, though, there is a little bit of that. Like, I'm just because I'm a little bit more in alignment and I don't really give a shit. If If I had just gone through a major loss and the cashier said to me, how are you? It's, it is very possible. I'm going to say I'm not okay. Yeah. And that's the thing there. There's, there's this level, like your, your sister-in-law said that, you know, having this pain that there are people who should be supporting her and she, but they don't know what to say. So either they don't say anything or they disappear and that pain that they have. And then we have this level of like, okay, I understand that they don't know what to say. Like I get, you know, I'm going to just give the cashier a bit of grace. She has no idea. She's just doing her job and she just says these things. And again, grief illiterate. It's a transaction. We're just buying something. You don't need to know how my day is, right? Like it's just, did you find everything? Okay. You know, there's a friend, um, a, she was a past guest of mine and she said the same thing. She said, she said, it's transactional. Why are you asking me how my day is? Like, just, did you find everything? Okay. And then here's your money and go, because we just don't know what people are going through. It's so true. And you know, there's two things I have in my head. One is, um, well, three, one is 
And I saw an interview with Brene Brown many, many years ago, and she was talking about this concept. And she said, you know, what she learned was she didn't know what to say. And she was the person that was ghosting her good friends. And then she felt all this shame and then they were mad at her. And it was like this vicious cycle. And so what she learned to do, and I have done this many times since I've heard this, is be able to say, I know you are experiencing a tremendous loss and I can't fathom what that must feel like. And I really, there's not, I don't know what to say and I don't know what to do. And there's nothing I can do to take this pain away for you, but I will be right by your side. And that is the key. So when we we don't, there's nothing that's going to bring that person back. No. You know, there's nothing you can say when you talk about what you can do is exactly that. Hold space. That's what you have to do is just hold space for them, cry with them. The one thing I would also, but well, there's loads I could say on this topic, but we don't have all day, um, is that when you're sitting with that person, I mean, they want to talk about their loved one. They want to tell stories and they yes. want to talk about them. Maybe not right at that acute grief moment, but they eventually will want to be talking about their loved one because their loved one is in that. That is, this is their loved one. They lived, they continue to live and they have not, they're not gone, if that makes sense. Right. So when I say to people, tell, ask, tell me about so-and-so and oh, they just start Start telling stories and they may be crying and you're yes. crying. And I always tell people, you ask, ask them, ask them. Now it's going to be uncomfortable for you as the person who is listening, but let's remember this is not about you. That's right. And so that brings me to my them. second point. My son now is a freshman in college, but when he was in kindergarten, so gosh, this is such a long time ago, one of his classmates' dad lost his one-year battle to cancer. It had started when they were in preschool, and like almost a year to the day, he passed, and he left you know, a family of a wife and a three-year-old and a kindergartner and a third grader. You know, it was really devastating, and what the fuck? This poor mom has to like keep going on with life, right? So even if she can take a leave of absence as a teacher from her job for a period of time, a little bit of time, she still has to mother and she's now on her own. And I just remember maybe a few weeks after he passed, we were standing next to each other at pick, at pick up at school and everybody was avoiding her. Yeah. And she was just standing there and I was like, fuck. So I go up to her and I said, I was close enough with her. I could say this. I go, I'm going to ask you a question, but before I ask it, I'm going to preface it by don't give me a bullshit line. She goes, okay. I go, how are you? And she just looked at me and she goes, I am not okay. And thank you because nobody wants to hear that I'm not okay. Yeah. Everybody wants to hear, I'm doing okay. I'm figuring it out because that makes them more comfortable. Yes. Yeah. So she said, thank you so much. I'm not okay. And I don't know how to get okay. And I said, <clears throat> you don't need to figure that out right now. Yeah. You don't yeah. need to figure that out. But I think she felt she needed to figure it out because she was so lost. Mm -hmm. And how do you raise your kids when you're that lost? You know, yes. she was really, just, struggling. Just, it was yeah. a really big struggle. Um, but I just think if anyone's listening to this and they don't know what to say, you know, Lisa nailed it on the head. It's not about you. And you're best off asking, not just how are you, but please just feel free to be honest with me. I can hold the space for it. And yeah, you, because that's the other thing. Or someone goes, what do you, what can I do for you? What do you need? And I'm telling you, when you are in that acute grief, you don't, don't know. know what you need. You have no. no idea. All you know is you want that person back in your life. So I would say we, we tend to say certain things because that's just what we're, you know, and if you do, listen, if you do say something stupid, just go, oh my God, that was the dumbest 
stupidest, shittiest thing. I, I, you know, and I had to say that to my friends who lost their only son and right. their only child at 19. He was one of the 12. And I said something stupid. And I'm like, what the hell? Or I did, or I didn't do something. And I was like, oh my God. And they just extended so much grace. And I was like, what a dipshit. What was I thinking? It's fine. Because as long as you acknowledge, oops, like I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to say. I did something stupid. I'm here now. Let me feed you, get a meal train going. Let me. Well, and then that was the third thing I wanted to come up to, which is don't take it personally. If the other person has a hard time being on the receiving end, right? Yeah. Would you say that, is that something that you coach people on often? Do they get you know, are you coaching the person that's in grief? Or are they having a hard time receiving? Are, is the person grieving have a hard time receiving? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't find that that is as much of an issue. I think when you're, you know, in the acute grief, which they say is really the first year, um, okay. or, and, and can even be even longer, but, um, when you're in that kind of right at that very moment, let's say the first week, month, you'll take, you'll take anything. I mean, I don't think that people are like, Oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. You know, don't worry. Very few more people are like, Oh my God, nobody's talking to me at the, when I'm picking up the children or this friend of mine who I thought was, and this happened to me. I mean, it does. It's like people don't message you or they don't talk to you. And honestly, what I have found is these losses shine a light, a very big light on who's your people, who are your people? It shined a light on my marriage. I was like, I already knew it wasn't happy and he wasn't happy and neither was I. And I was like, I gotta go. I mean, life's too goddamn short, I'm out. Right. And it shines a light on all those things. So it shines a light on relationships as well. So when when the person starts to see this, the griever starts to see this, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's mm-hmm. another loss. It's another grief, but your people will come to you and give you, like mm-hmm. you said, hold that space for you. And those are the people that you want in your life and get rid of the toxic people. They'll either weed themselves out <laughs> or you weed them out because you don't have any more time for it. Yeah. You don't have the bandwidth for it. And it kind of makes mm-hmm. me think of a statement I say all the time, which is there's a gift in every challenge and a purpose in the pain. And that is not to say that, you know, you'd rather have lost a child or you'd rather have lost a parent than to have gained that gift. It's just that you can't do anything about the fact that that circumstance occurred. Absolutely. What came out of it that may not have come out of it otherwise? Is it a closer relationship with someone? Is it the implosion of a relationship that needed to be weeded out, which can be incredibly painful at the beginning? But I think the further you get away from it, you'll be like, thank God. Yes. You know, that that needed to happen, but I just was too lazy to even make it happen. And now life's too short. I don't give a shit. If I upset you, we're done. Or they're reading themselves out, right? So it gives you great clarity, some clarity you want, some clarity you don't want, right? But it gives you this gift of great clarity. Um, No, it does. It does. You're right. And I think that you're right, Stacey. And the thing that I, you know, have said is like, obviously it would be like, would I choose to have Jack back versus the, you know, the career and the knowledge that I have? I would have him back, my parents, all these people back in a heartbeat. I would never exchange that. But this is the reality, like you said, this is the reality. This is the reality of life. And so the resilience of being able to get back up and get back up and get back up and work through, not around, but work through and understanding that that grief and loss is never going to 
you're never going to get over it. It's never going to be a thing. After the one year anniversary, you're all bet. Don't those lies, those things that are, those just not true. You are always going to, but I don't know that you have to live in suffering. Mm -hmm. That's that for me is a bit different. Will I always grieve the loss of these loved ones? hundred percent. They're, they're with me, but I will always grieve them. I will always, I will always miss them. However, I won't suffer the rest of my life. You know, there's a difference between suffering. And we kind of talked about that suffering part in part one, right? So we were talking in our first episode for people that are just coming in now, we had an original episode with Lisa where we were talking about her own landscape and her own journey of immense loss in a very short period of time. And the trauma is never the event. The trauma is the way we interpret the experience and the way it's embodied in our system, right? And the core beliefs it gives us. So it's the lens through which it changes the way we live life. So we were talking a lot about that suffering and suffering looks very different for a lot of people. We talked about the somatic experiences, the things that are happening physically in our body, the disconnect we feel So if people are struggling with that part, you want to go back and listen to that first episode. We gave a couple of curious exercises that people could come up with. Grief is its own landscape for every single person. And I think you've touched on it. There's no right or wrong way. There's no timeline. No. And anybody that wants to put a timeline on it for you, by the way, can go F off. Yeah. So like... I've had plenty of people in my life who have lost someone significant and their spouse has said, really, you're still, you're still yes. upset. And exactly. my girlfriend's looking at me going, what do I do with that information? You know, and I say, you just go back and say, I might be like this for a while. It's going to have its own time frame, And if you can't handle it, you're going to have to do your own work. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, yeah, exactly. Or, and, or you've got a, this was not my experience, but I have had friends, their, their, sp- their spouse lost their parent and they're like, yeah. Oh my God, they're broken. They're never, I'm like, no, they're grieving. Yes. They're not broken. They're grieving. They're in pain. I promise you just, just carry them through to this it's okay. They'll be okay. Like you, you don't have to fix it. It's not fixable. Just be, I promise you she'll, she'll work through and she will start to see the sunlight again. She will start to see color again, but not right now. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. Just let her be. She's not a broken thing that you need to put together, you know, and make, and I loved what you said. Actually, I think it was, you said about your sister-in-law before was that, you know, she, um, she's different. Yeah. We're different. It changes you. We're different. We're not the same. We're not the same. I mean, the core of who we are is, but, but we are not the same person. We're new. Yeah. That's okay. That's okay. My daughter. Other people have to be willing to, to navigate with the new. And that's yes. a whole other podcast. That's a whole other <laughs> show. I tell you, we could go hours on that we one. We could go hours on that. But I really, as we wrap up this episode, I really want um, people to know how they can get in touch with you because I think that you just hold so much positive energy and so much knowledge and so much space for the people that need it. So if somebody w- is going through any kind of grief and you labeled so many different types at the top of this podcast, what is the best way for them to find you and get in touch with you? Well, um, I've got, my website is holisticlifecoaching.org.uk. Um, but I'm also on Instagram at, um, holistic underscore coach underscore Lisa. Okay. Um, and I have a Facebook page holistic life coaching with Lisa Marie. So any, any of these social media links, there's a way to get a hold of me and then Perfect. we can always have a quick chat. And we will put all of those links in the show notes. So nobody's f- 
you know, ferociously typing these things out. We'll put the links in the show notes. Um, gosh, you were such a bright light in such a difficult space. So I'm so happy to have had you on. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge with us and just allowing us to have a real raw and honest conversation about grief. Cause I think it's one of the greatest areas that we just, we try to wash over because it just makes people feel so uncomfortable. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. It's been such a pleasure. Absolutely. So again, guys, if you enjoyed listening to part two, you're going to want to go back to part one. Hopefully you'll listen to both and you'll love what Lisa has to say. All the links for her are in the show notes. And if you like this episode, you're probably going to like a lot of my episodes because we're pretty much raw and real and we just talk about things as they are. You're going to want to subscribe to this podcast. The more subscribers, the better. And you'll get notified when I drop a new podcast, which is pretty much every week. So please subscribe, even give a feedback or give it a ranking if you feel inclined. Um, but follow us and listen to us because I think we've got a lot of really great info here and share it. So thanks so much for coming along on the ride. We're so happy to have had you here. I hope you gain some great knowledge and have a great day. Mm-hmm.